one of the many, many seats that are out and about. Uh, you're very welcome uh, to join us uh, this morning in worship. Oh, we look very spread out. Excellent social distancing, folks. <laughs> it is good. Um, yeah, you're welcome uh, to worship this morning. I only have uh, a couple of announcements. One this evening is our carol service, um, which you might think this is beautifully set up for and would be wonderful, and it would, but we're not in here. Uh, so we will be outside, um, and it is bring your own hot drink, and if you check your uh, announcements, you will find a link that has the lyrics, so you can either print them off in advance, um, or you can use your phone uh, while you're there, or you can do what I do, and make up the words and fa la 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 whenever you find a fa la 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 moment. Um, so do come along to that, do dress warm, uh, bring your neighbours, bring your friends, bring your granny. Um, it should be good fun. So that's six o'clock, um, so uh, remember to have your dinner early. Because um, we'll put the spuds on at half five and then realise we're supposed to be at the church at six. Um, next week uh, is our nativity at 11 o'clock and unless you have a small child, uh, you can watch that at home on YouTube and Zoom. Um, or if you'd really like to come to church an in-person service, there is a half nine reflect, small reflective service led by myself. So I'll see you all there. No. <laughs> uh, so you're welcome to come to that if you want an in-person in service or else the nativity will be online. Um, just we can't fit everybody in and everybody loves a good nativity. So it's the fairest way um, that we can do it. And then finally, this is uh, Ruth's last Sunday with us. Oh. And we're back to the old grind. No, sorry, Stephen. <laughs> uh, Ruth, it has been wonderful. Um, thank you so much. And uh, we've really enjoyed uh, all the services you've led and all the challenges. Um, and we look forward to this morning. And thank you so much for uh, serving us at this time. I'm not used to getting a round of applause as I head to the pulpit. Usually it's uh, afterwards saying, thank God she's finished. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save and he will take great delight in you. Good morning. And you're all very welcome to worship here this morning. Um, do we have anybody to light the candles or will I just pick somebody at random? Pick someone. Excellent. So, Alan, you're closest. You're going to light the candles this morning. Um, so, our three candles today. Our first candle uh, is to remind us of hope um, and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Our second candle is that of peace and the peace in our hearts of knowing that Jesus loves us and died for us. And the third candle is the one today is for joy. And hopefully we will find uh, joy this morning in worship as we do in Jesus. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you. We're going to sing a song a little bit later on um, about the candles as well and a little bit more. But let us pray. Lord, we don't find it easy sometimes to be open before you. We often leave worship with the knowledge that while you were here, our minds and our thoughts were elsewhere. We allow so many things to become obstacles between us and you and your living presence. We pray that you touch our lives with your love and flood our worship with your Holy Spirit, that we may offer spirit-filled praise to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, Jude is going to lead us in worship this morning. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'll invite you to stand as we sing together. Though my tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. By this breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. By this hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. strength in the darkness i'll dance in the shadows i'll sing the 
joy of the Lord is my strength When I cannot see you with my eyes Let faith arise with you When I cannot feel your hand in mine Let faith arise to you God of mercy and love I will praise you Lord Oh you shine with glory Lord of light I feel alive with you in your presence now I come alive, I am alive with you. There is strength when I stay, I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When sorrow comes my way, you are the shield around me. Always you remain, like courage in the fight. I hear you call my name. Jesus, you are coming, walking on the waves, reaching for the light. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let us pray together. Abba, Father, on this, an Advent Sunday, we come to prepare ourselves for you. We thank you for the men and women who for us have been like John the Baptist. For those who have prepared the way for others to hear you speak. To know you are real. And to make ready to welcome you into their lives. For those who have been ready to stand and be counted, to suffer loss and rejection rather than deny the truth of Christ. We thank you for those today, even in our materialistic world, whose words and deeds demonstrate the reality of your presence. For those whose way of life gives hope to others, and glory to you. We thank you especially for those whose deeds opened our eyes to your truth, whose words opened our ears to your voice, whose lives opened our hearts to the power of the Spirit. For those who made Christ real, for those who made us and make us hungry for his love, and thirsty for his refreshing joy. May we, be your, by your Holy Spirit, be channels of your life-refreshing, life-transforming grace for others. Father, we come before you to confess that we are lacking in so many ways. As we see the vast chasm between you and humanity, we remember that on that first Christmas, you bridged that gap. You sent your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is going to be brought to us now by Rose, and it is from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Sing, daughter Zion, shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach for you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame, I will gather the exiles. I will give praise, give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter uh, 3, reading verses 7 to 18. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, the man with two tunics should share with him who has none, and the one who has food should do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I am will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and preached the good news to them. May God bless this word to our hearts. Amen. Now, our children's talk today comes with a warning. And this is just as much for anybody who's watching this afterwards uh, when it's recorded as anything else. This is not an announcement, okay? I have three girls at home. And anyone who's familiar with when you get the good news that you're going to have a baby is familiar with the nine months or seven months or whatever it is of preparation you have to do beforehand. And you get this big long list of things and that's only what the baby needs. Never mind what you need. 
So I brought with me today um, my baby's bag. Now, this is gathered up from all sorts of corners of our house, memory boxes and everything else. But we have to make sure that we bring a blanket with us to the hospital so that the baby is nice and warm. And quite often, this is something that's made by somebody who loves the baby. You love the baby, Carl. Brilliant. Well, this one was made by my sister-in-law for my, my youngest. And then we also have to make sure that we bring some cloths with us, because let's face it, babies are messy. And they don't understand uh, that you can't throw up on mummy and daddy and things like that. So you have to bring plenty of cloths with you. They don't wash your clothes either in the hospital. So you have to make sure you have plenty. And then you get to bring the cutest little baby clothes as well because the baby has to be dressed because they come out and they're completely starkers and they have to be dressed in the cute little clothes that fit them for about a week, if you're lucky. Um, you also have to make sure that you bring something to feed the baby with sometimes or quite often they provide these in the hospital um, but you need to make sure you have a way of feeding the baby. And then, of course, you have to have a way of cleaning the baby. Um, they don't like you bringing these into the hospital, though. They prefer cotton wool and water. But um, when you're on your second or third one, you, you tend to realize what works and what doesn't. So you have to bring something to keep the baby clean. Now, this thing has probably caused rumors around Port Arlington because mum bought me these yesterday. And they are safely going to the food bank after this. But you have to make sure you bring lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of nappies. There's, uh, there's, I don't know how many is in this, but it's probably only enough for a day. Um, so you have to make sure you have lots of nappies and you certainly have lots of nappies at home. So these are all things that you're building up at home as well. Um, and then, of course, you have to have the little teddy bear as well for the baby in case they get lonely um, in the cot that's six inches away from you. Um, so you have to make sure that you have that as well. But these are all things that we do when we know something really, really good is going to happen. Because we have to get ourselves ready and we have to prepare. We have to make sure we have all of these for the hospital. We have to make sure we have lots of them for at home. And we have to make sure that everybody knows the emergency numbers and all sorts of things. And that, you know, the partner has their phone with them and charged and turned on and is going to answer and all those sorts of things. But we know that that's going to happen. We, we kind of, we have an idea of when that's going to happen. So we get ourselves prepared and ready. Um, and when it does, we kind of forget about all the, the yucky stuff that's gone on beforehand. We forget about all the morning sickness and we forget about all the pains and aches and everything else. Because the good news is that our baby has arrived. And that we want to share that then with everybody else. And today we're thinking about being prepared. Being prepared not for Jesus coming, but rather for Jesus coming again. Because Jesus has already come. Now, I can't say that Mary probably had much of this stuff. But Jesus came and Jesus is coming again. And we need to be prepared for when that happens. And that doesn't start with when we know what date it is. Because we won't know what date he's coming. It starts now so that when he comes, we're ready. So we're going to, um, we're going to sing again. Judy's going to um, play for us. It's the tune of Away in a Manger. Um, <clears throat> now, when Colin and I are married about 19 years, and we were meant to go to New Zealand for our honeymoon, and I love all things New Zealand, including the All Blacks, but especially when we're beating them on the rugby pitch. Um, but we were meant to, so we were meant to go to New Zealand, and I quite like, you know, sort of Maori stuff and things like that. And uh, this song came from New Zealand. The, the words of it came from New Zealand. And some of them are in Maori. So in verse 2, for example, we have what they, they there at the bottom, they call a koha. And a koha is a gift. And a teonga is something that is treasured by the Maori culture. It's a possession that they treasure. They call it a teonga. So a koha, a teonga, a treasure, a precious treasured gift is laid in the hay. And in verse three, we have a koru. 
And a koru, new life like a koru now being on fold. A koru is, is like a fern. See, another way it uncurls and it opens out and it's, it's alive. Uh, and a koru is in, in Maori culture is a symbol, symbol of creation as well. And then in verse 5, we have ihu kariti. And ihu kariti is the Maori for Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. So I do apologize if I have completely butchered the Maori language, but please know it comes from love. Uh, so this is to the tune of Away in a Manger, and we're going to stand and sing. kids for the ark yeah um or anyone for kids faith are we have a discussion group andrew or yeah excellent let's pray for our young folk as they leave us now heavenly father we thank you for the blessing that our children are we thank you that even through the tough times that we can still share your love with them. We pray for their teachers, 
that they may share your light and your love with them now and that they too may find that they are coming to the manger to worship the new king. Amen. We're going to watch a short video clip now and I do apologize. Quite a few people from the first service said they were in tears, so I am sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to make anybody cry. <laughs> You know, I'll reach for the tissues now. <laughs> Does the 11th of March 2011 ring any bells with anyone? Hmm? Yes, sir. Maybe if I told you that that was the day that an earthquake and tsunami hit Japan, you might recall it. I spent that day, I will never forget it till the day I die sat on the couch doing something I never do, which is watch Sky News. Um, watching and trying to you know, figure out when this happened, how this happened, why this happened. And it, just the story over the day was just unfurling, like that koru uh, in front of me, just unfurling. And um, it was a long day shall we say. The kids were gone to school, the kids were packed off, and at about eight o'clock, I got the news of um, the, the tragedy that had hit. But it might make a bit more sense to you if I told you that my husband had actually been in Japan for the two weeks prior to that. 
working. And his flight was due to take off at half past six that morning. And every tragedy that ever happens, correct me if I'm wrong, but it always tells you what time these things happen at. Not that day. Not a single news channel could tell me what time the, you know, the, the uh, tsunami hit Tokyo. So I had no idea as to whether or not the plane had taken off. This, you know, by half past eight, the airport was closed. So the day was spent watching the news, looking at that ticker tape on the bottom, kind of going, waiting for it to say, you know, oh, by the way, the flight that Mr. Colin Matthews was on took off on time this morning. But all that was going through my head was, I am not ready for this to happen. I'm not prepared for this to happen. I'm not prepared to raise, we had two girls at the time, not prepared to raise them on my own. How am I going to pay the mortgage? I wasn't working. I didn't even know how the heating system in the house works. Now, 10 years later, I still have no clue how the heating system works. But he got into Heathrow. They hadn't been told anything that had happened. Got into Heathrow, 40 missed calls on his phone, rings me up going, yeah, what's wrong with you? And I'm kind of going, please look at the television. Um, but he was back on firm ground and uh, they just hadn't told anybody on the plane because they didn't want people panicking, which was understandable. But that whole day I was spent thinking about what am I going to do? How, why am I, you know, how can I get myself prepared? Because I certainly was not ready for something like that to happen. John the Baptist's message throughout his life, his calling in his life was quite simple. Prepare yourself because Jesus is coming. It wasn't a matter of if Jesus came. It was a matter of when. Jesus is coming. And one thing I love about John the Baptist is he wasn't very picky about who he said these things to, or indeed what he said. Some of the, we'd call it today, we'd say today maybe he called a spade a spade. Um, now, I'm not suggesting that we go around calling people breeds of vipers. I don't think that would be a particularly nice thing to do. But also, we shouldn't be afraid of uh, sharing God's word with people. And we certainly shouldn't be sugarcoating God's message because we don't want to offend people. Because the truth is echoed in, uh, John's whole message is echoed by the words of Jesus himself. In John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. It doesn't matter if you are from Abraham's lineage. It doesn't matter if you are the best person that you know. We have all fallen short and nobody can come to the Father except through Jesus. John also answers the many questions that we heard in the reading about, well, how can we get prepared? And maybe that's questions that we have as well. That we're asking, well, what can we do to get prepared? And this is summed up in Matthew chapter 6, where it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. In the video clip that we watched, where did that man's treasure lie? And his granddaughter saw their faces light up when they saw each other. And his love for her spurred him on. Even in the face of his judgmental neighbor who clearly thought he'd lost his marbles. But he was getting ready for something that he knew was going to happen. And he was willing to persist to make sure that he was ready. He did give up at one point. We're all guilty of that. But then he remembered why he was doing it in the first place. So he put on his fancy 1980s power suit and he got to it. But did you notice that some of the neighbor's kids even joined in as well? I wonder where we are in that story. 
Are we in preparation mode? Are we the grumpy neighbor? Are we the children who are watching how others are doing it and trying to do likewise? Maybe we're the, being, the one who's been watched. And if we are, are we aware of that? And are we doing anything differently? Have we got our power suit, the armor of God, on with purpose as we prepare for God's return, for Jesus' return? Or maybe we don't think we need to prepare. Maybe we don't think. Maybe we think we've got it all together. We're sorted. We have, we have all, all our life in order. Well, I'm sorry to say that we're wrong. And if that's what we are thinking, then today is a good day to come before God, ask his forgiveness, and start getting ready. Advent is a time of preparation. When we read scripture of how people in the Bible prepared for Jesus' arrival as a baby. But it's so much more than that. It's a reminder for us today that Jesus will come again and that we need to be prepared. We can get so caught up in our worldly lives, especially at this time of the year when it seems like many are getting ready to bunker down for Armageddon. But you know, that's exactly what we need to be doing. We need to be making sure that we're ready. We need to make sure that our hearts are prepared. And we need to make sure that we're sharing that good news with everyone we meet, just as quickly as we say Happy Christmas. The difference is, for those who are prepared, when Jesus comes again, it won't be a time of carnage or destruction or sorrow or pain. We'll be swept up in his loving arms, just like a newborn baby in the arms of the ones who love them most. Just like we were told in Zephaniah, at that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. What a joyful day that will be if we're prepared. My question for you is this. Are you ready for Jesus to come again? Have you got your power suit on with purpose? Or what do you need to do today to get your house in order? Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Think of someone whose life is in turmoil. Someone who's facing a time of change and is not sure which way to go, where to find help or even how to cope with tomorrow. We pray that Christ's coming may fill them with strength. Think of someone who is struggling to cope with the onset of illness or old age, and looks back to unfulfilled dreams and broken promises. We pray that Christ's coming may fill them with hope. Think of someone who's overwhelmed by the pressures and the responsibilities laid upon them. Someone for whom the expectations of parents, employers, society, or even themselves are becoming too much to bear. We pray that Christ's coming may fill them with a sense of worth. Think of someone 
who's facing the implications of the wrong decisions they've made. Someone who has made money, financial success, security, or material possessions the focus of their lives and is now discovering the emptiness it brings. We pray that Christ's coming may give them a new longing to see life through God's eyes. Think of someone who has been coming to church for years. They filled a seat, sung the hymns, listened to the prayers and preaching, and then returned home just as they came, untouched by the worship of God. We pray that Christ's coming may mean that for them, nothing is ever the same again. Think of yourself and all your life means. Think of all you possess and all you have done. And think of all it will mean in the face of eternity. Think of your relationship now with God. We pray that Christ's coming and coming again will focus us on him daily. In the name of Christ, who came and is coming. Amen. I think Jude is going to lead us in some worship. share in the grace together and um, just like to say I think there is prayer ministry after the service up in the prayer room so if anybody would like to go for that please do um, and also just to say thank you all very very much for welcoming me into your church community into your homes into your uh, nursing home rooms and um, it's been such a pleasure it's just been wonderful being here um, hopefully you haven't heard the last of me you might might invite me back maybe sometime um, but we'll see, how, we'll see how everything else goes. So let's share the grace together. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.